Hello and welcome to this video on definite iteration, which is also known as for loops. Uh, some people also call these count controlled loops if you're doing the OCR specification on computer science. Now, to do a basic for loop, the fundamentals are you start off by counting. So we're going to say for count in range and we're going to say how many repetitions we want. That's the way you think about this. And I'm going to go print count. So at this point, I'm going to run this, and this will now count out from 0 to 9. The reason why is, in this case, count starts at 0, all right? And we're going to count up to position 10, all right? Remember that arrays start at 0, and counting on a computer starts at 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 is position 10, basically, and that's what's happened here. Now, a lot of the time in exams, you will also see 4i in range uh, 10 uh, and so on. So print i. So there is just a similarity, and you may see i, you may see, you may see j, you may see n. And what you need to understand is that is the position you're counting up to. So if you count i as 0 as your starting position, what position are you going up to? Uh, so we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That is position 0, 1. So that would be position 10 of those numbers, basically. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So hopefully that makes sense. So we start there. That number is position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on. Now, why do you need to understand that? Well, because you may want to count between a range. Now, I'm going to show you this. I'm going to hashtag this out. What you may wish to do, all right, is you may need to go between a range. So I might go for i in range. And I'm going to have my starting number and my finished number in a list if I start counting at 0 uh, and 36. And if I print that out now, I run that. You can see how it works because there are 36 repetitions, basically. But because we start at 0, we end up at 35. Now, the other thing that you might want to do is add another parameter to that. I might want to do a 5 times table. So I might want to count up in 5s. You can use another parameter or digit at the end of that, and you can work out what is happening. So you can see here, because I know I'm starting at 0, all right? It's going 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So this is how much you count up by. So that will print all numbers up in five increments. So that's how many increments you want each repetition. So for loops can be quite good for that. Just going to hashtag that out. You may want to go backwards. Now, if you want to go backwards, you've got to approach it slightly differently. So I'm going to go for n in range, but this time, instead of starting on your lower number, you start on your higher number. So you see here, I'm going to go back, all right? I want to go from 36 to 0, all right? Uh, let's go from 35 to 0, but I'm going to go minus 5, and this time, let's go print n. I'm going to run that. So can you see I've gone down in increments? So if you want to count backwards using a for loop, all you do is when you have your numbers, instead of having your start number as the lower number, you have it as the higher number and you go down to the lowest number and subtract five or whatever number you want to increment that, uh, decrement, <laughs> decrement that by. Uh, so what I'm going to do uh, is now show you it in theory, because you might want to do a, a, a simple times table program. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go, uh, num uh, we're going to say uh, time table, times table, 
equals input, 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 uh, which times table would you like to work out? And what we're going to do, because we're going to be working with numbers here, is we're going to convert that into an integer, because you're going to need that number in a minute. Then the next thing we are going to do is we're going to have a total, and I'm setting the total at zero to begin with. It's just good practice. Now I'm going to say for i in range, and I want to do, I want to start at one, and we're going to go up. And just so you can see that there, print i. Let me clear this screen, uh, clear down here, and run that. What timetable would you like? I'm just going to say two. I've not done anything with this yet. And then I've got my for loop here for showing that I'm counting from one up to position 11, which is actually 10. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, I could increment that by two, uh, but that's not what I'm looking to do. All right, that's not what I want to do. Uh, or I could start at zero and increment by two and just count up in twos, all right? Like, uh, let's go two, two uh, zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. I could do that. That's not what I want to do though, all right? I want my start number and I want my finish number. Uh, we're gonna do our two times table again. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, all right, total equals, and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna go i times int, times table. So I've got my total. Now watch what I'm going to need to do with that. Uh, total equals str total. Now I'm doing it on separate lines. You can join it together like what I've done up here, but it's just to break it down for anyone that may be struggling with coding and may need to build their skill set. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to print. I can even do this here as well. I equals uh, str i because I'm working with that number so I can convert that into string so I can say i plus times uh, plus times table right uh, in fact I need to convert that back so what we're going to do is str here okay Maybe it is a good practice to just do that there, all right? We're gonna do it here. That way it's all in one line. But at least you saw the difference between the two there. Now, if I was to run that, it doesn't give me the answer right now. Let's just run it so you can see that two. We can see that I've got one times two, uh, zero times two, one times two. Now I need to update my code to make sure that starts at one again. Let's run it. This is why as developers, you need to check your code reg regularly. So one times two, two times two, three times two, and so on. Now, I've worked out the total in a separate variable as I've been doing this. But what I'm going to do is plus equals plus str total. Because remember, when you're joining strings together, you must make sure that they work out. So I'm going to run that. I'm going to do a two times table here. And you can see 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So I've done my for loop. I've said my start number are OK. So remember, we start at 0 in a for loop. So I had to start it at 1, move it along 1. But remember that position 10 would be actually 11. I've not incremented it because I wanted to show all of the times table. I could go up to uh, a up to 12 if I wanted by going to 13, uh, doing a two times table and so on. Uh, and that's a, a video on how to do definite or for loops. That's how to do iteration. Hopefully it's been useful to you. Uh, watch it back, play it a couple of times. And if you have liked that, watch the other videos, they may help you with your programming.